Are you guys ready for the finals? All right, both of these guys play for the same team, ESC. One from Korea, one from right here. Please put your hands together for Daisy. And his opponent, friend and teammate, Goody. Are you guys ready? Good luck, have fun. Day nine in Kailaros, we'll take it from here. Thank you, Jarrett. Welcome back to the casting booth. We have the final match of the EPS series before we begin the IEM semifinals and then finals this afternoon. And I'm pretty excited about the fact that we get to see Goody go up against Daisy, teammates in this matchup. And I do believe they practice together quite a bit. Yeah, I would consider these two to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean. Obviously, they are two of the most formidable players on ESC Icy Box. Um, Daisy, though, having come over from Korea, uh, he was previously in OGS, or was it Daisy? No, Daisy Prime, wasn't it? Daisy Prime. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he came over to be able to join ESC here and has been pretty darn formidable in the German scene. Yeah, I mean, Daisy does though, kind of have these weird instabilities to his play, where he'll do these way bold moves that you don't see a lot. Sometimes they'll work really nicely, and other times they'll just fall apart miserably, like double forge rushes against a Zerg, or going for weird Phoenix plays against Terran. It's cool to watch, but most significantly against Goody, you'll need that refinement, because Goody, even though he's known for mech, has been doing Marine Marauder pretty much nonstop for the last several months. Been doing it as standard, as stably, as predictably, but as strong as possible. And Daisy's gonna have to run headlong into that. Yeah, you know you know, Mech has had its day when Goody stands up and says, okay, I need to learn bio for TVP. I think, I think that would be very a, a useful thing to have. As, uh, he's chuckling, I'm not, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, bless him. But he's, he's such a nice guy. He's such a kind of like He a nice really guy. is one of the sweetest people yeah. you'll ever meet. He is also a big practice player. He is a, just plays so, so many games. He was originally known for that mech play, which I, I like quite a bit because without anyone else to really mimic, he had to figure that out on his own. Yeah, and I still love his incorporation of tanks into PVT anyway. Uh, but anyway, coming to Daisy here now. Daisy is a <laughs> rather handsome chap, to say the least. Uh, he um, it was one of the, he was the first person to actually qualify for the TSL4, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, but then after that, we haven't seen too much of him elsewhere. So th there is that kind of sporadicness in his ability to actually perform, uh, despite yeah. being very, very formidable. First map will be on Daybreak, so this is very much the passive, take your time, get your Ghost Viking tech up, get your 3-3, and we'll see who can win it in a bunch of big direct engagements. Yep. So it looks like both players are ready. I'm very excited, because I love PVT on this map. I do as well. It's so good. There's so much that can occur. Again, Daybreak for me, the really defining map for metagames in almost every single matchup. Yeah, oh yeah. So. There's been the good luck to have fun, the good game, and all we're doing is waiting for the host to go. And I like the fact that you bring up the, um, the, the meta game on Daybreak. It really is where the standard sort of grew from. Yeah. Players who play very calm standard games will be choosing this map if they're losing in a best of X. We see crazier builds go on on Entombed Valley, on Ohana, but this map, the distances are so far. Yeah, and I mean, for the new breed of maps, I'm going to call them, this was really the first map to come along from yes, that new breed. Yeah. Daybreak being introduced over at GSL and then working its way into Ladder, and then working its way subsequently into every single tournament ever. Earth. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you just can't hate the map. The only thing yeah. that I think is significant to note is that in the center, there's those, those inner expansions sometimes are high on minerals, sometimes are low, depends on the league. In IEM, I know it's a full mineral set of eight on this map is as well. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Shall do indeed as we load up onto Daybreak. Once again, guys, spawning up to the top right-hand corner here as our Red Protoss. Give it up, give it up for ESC Daisy.
for one of the sweetest men in esports and one of the pioneers of the mech play. Give a cheer for ESC's Goody. Now again, there's, there's the, always that method that Terrans do end up using of working siege tanks into their play against Protoss nowadays. It's something that uh, MTW Supernova uh, specifically is a huge, huge fan of on maps like Cloud Kingdom, for example. You see, we saw through, for example, the Intel Extreme Masters qualifiers all the way through that Supernova was always using mech, uh, tank play in his style going up against Protoss. And Goody has been an advocate of that in the past as well. I'm not 100% sure it works as well on Daybreak as it would on, say, like Cloud Kingdom, for example. Yeah, it's quite hard to pull it off. Yeah. There's just, you, you don't have enough space control on the map. What Protosses will generally do is play passively on three bases, not really attack, and then start leaping into action by getting Warp Prism Harass up, starting these slow pushes after hitting max and after banking up 3k minerals so they can do those aggressive rewarpings. For the most part, it's a little bit too difficult to engage Terrans these days as their control's just so crisp. Yeah, and I mean, for me, Daisy really define what really defines him is his timing pushes right now in in Starcraft 2. I mean he yes he can go into those big macro games but his timing pushes not only in this matchup but also in PvZ uh, have been absolutely phenomenal in the past. Uh, so we'll have to see what he's going to opt for here but again it being daybreak there's always that massive massive potential for that big macro game and when you're going up against Goody even if he is still playing bio he does play that relatively defensive style with drops here and there, but he's nowhere near as aggressive as, say, someone like a bomber or a supernova. Yeah, Goody does the kind of typical by-the-book aggression. Bomber goes just nuts, man. I would never want to play a TVP versus no. Bomber, but um, I, I do think, though, that the way that Bombers and the Tages of today play are not stylistic. They're the new style of TVP that people are really going to start picking up in the next few months. The big key to what they're, we're seeing Terrence do nowadays is that there? Ooh, an interesting maneuver from Goody. I'd honestly expect him to take his gas around 21 now because he is known for doing that fast banshee play. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm sort of expecting Goody here to actually go really kind of full hog with this aggression. Um, again, you know, it's when we were talking about the aggression earlier, it was more the fact that he doesn't get aggressive with just the drops oh. and the bio. He normally does get aggressive with these earlier like one base plays and then leading him into an expansion which is something that Goody has been able to get used to quite well with that batch control with those Hellion presences uh, and for now Daisy I mean if he gets caught off guard by this sometimes Daisy's uh, control can fall apart a little bit yeah now Daisy's in kind of a weird position right now what he's seen from his opponent is a barracks with no add-on and fast gas this pretty much locks your opponent to what I would call cutesy aggression he can go for Hellion Harass. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> Speaking of cutesy, he can go for Hellion Harass. He can go for Banshee play. So what we see a lot of Protosses do is they, they rally this Nexus back up into the main and focus largely on just building Stalkers and walling themselves off. Goody's actually doing kind of like a TVZ style where he's going uh, Reactor Marine with a tank. This is just, looks like Goody's mech play is going to make a debut. Yep. As I said before, <laughs> that siege tank play, it, it can occur. Um, I, I'm still not a fan of it on Daybreak. Uh, it's something that I really don't think um, works too well with the architecture of anything else. It, there's not really too many spots to be able to siege up and uh, be able to fully punish your opponent. We've seen a lot of tank play um, on this map, for example, and then one Hellion does die in here, getting pretty good scout off. So not too bad there by Daisy. But once you establish the siege tanks and bunkers at the front of your opponent's natural, for example, if he wants to go for something like that, then there's so much surface area to be able to spread out your units as the defender yeah. and then slow and then push forwards that it doesn't work near enough as well as it does on some map like Cloud Kingdom. I do though think that Goody is one of the few players to really showcase the style, these mech openings and be so effective. I would love to see an extra two factories and then just see him do a regular Hellion tank marine push. If you are going early game mech, as Goody's kind of hinting towards, the marines on the reactor barracks are an important component until you get around maybe 16, 20 marines. Then you can sort of replace back and do some of your other mech units. But thus far, Goody's just going ultra safe. And engineering, yeah. I mean, if you're going to... Well, 
I mean, this is this is Goody's style. This is he's gonna sprinkle in the tanks and then he's gonna eventually transition. What on earth? Oh, okay. My apologies. He is gonna go that full mech play. That is really quite bizarre. As normally he would just go for Marines tanks and then into a lot of you know the standard Marine Marauder uh, medevac, but mixing up here and going for that full mech play, I am rather intrigued. I will say, I do think that this engineering bay is quite a mistake. I mean, getting it up that early, what for? I mean, building an early turret, you scouted your opponent and saw that he was on one gas. It's physically impossible for him to be going DT and to have any more than one stalker. I mean, second Helling could have easily gotten that information. So a little bit of over safetyness coming in from Goody, but with four factories down right now, this indicates that he wants to attack with his mech. He is not interested in playing passively. So I'm quite excited to see this upcoming time push. Yeah, and I mean, with Daisy going for that double forge right now, I think that's more than safe enough. I mean, Goody is going to want to slow, just ramp up this production and then hit some, as you said, specific timing. But it's not going to be too soon. So this double forge is going to be able to get a little bit of momentum here. Uh, he's already getting those immortals out. Has he already scouted the mech? Oh, he scouted everything. So he's just going to completely... The problem... Okay, so the problem with mech is I've seen people actually go for mech against the likes of Goody, for example. And if you actually prepare for mech with immortals, high Templars for feedback against, say, for example, potential Banshees, potential Ravens, potential Thors. If you then go for Zealot Charge as well, these three units, along with maybe one or two sprinkled in Colossus, demolish and crush and crucify and break so hard that <laughs> mech force. It's unbelievable. So I'm really, really worried for Goody if Daisy just keep, keep, keeps going with that. It looks like that round of three tanks is almost done. The one thing that we just see Goody do all the time is way over queuing at his factories. He's been a little better about it as of late, but I mean, we're already seeing some queuing there. That's okay in those spots when it's close to being completed, but it is just a recipe for disaster elsewise. And Goody now doing a nice mech push in the way that only Goody would. Yeah, I like the four tank push. Uh, it can work very, very well. He's bringing some SCVs. He's going to set up those bunkers like we were talking about before at the start uh, of this game here. But again, Daisy is going to have a lot of surface area to be able to deal with this. So uh, Daisy is going to end up spreading out his units. He knows this is on the way. He's seen it with an observer. Uh, but that blue flame is still kicked in here. Uh, and Daisy needs to be really, really adamant about this control. Good. He's sieging it all up. Spots his first prey. And this is just the nicest positioning by Daisy. Look at that. Yeah. Goody's trying to work his way up. It's got to be so careful. And now Goody's going to siege up on the high ground. Oh, gosh. Accidentally blocking off the reinforcing units with that one tank. We'll have to unsiege one right away. Yeah. And look at that. Nice little poke forwards with the two immortals, delaying the amount of bunkers that could actually go down. Picks off a Hellion. Slightly misrallied there. But again, actually, this is getting a little bit scary. That's quite a lot of mech that he has here sprinkled in with a few Marines. And once those two bunkers go up, if he allows them to... Again, he needs to keep poking forwards, oh. but he's just going to go for it. Guardian shields go up, and he focuses down some of those siege tanks that poke forwards with those two immortals down to the south. Really nicely done here. Charge out as well. Look at that exactly decimation. Oh, as for my now, gosh. On the back row. Daisy roasts that push with complete and total ease. And with 1-1 one, one finished, he'll be able to start 2-2. Two, two, bam, he can take a third and fourth right now with complete calm. Goody now realizing that he's in a load of trouble. As Instantly throws down the armory. As I said, though, this is why nobody really goes for mech in this matchup anymore. You just get, you scout out, you get immortals, you get charged, and then eventually you get high templar. And you just demolish it. There's nothing really the mech player can do other than try and transfer back into bio, but you've committed so much to the mech play. And look at this. Daisy just ramping it up, just push, punishing everything that Goody has done, even with these siege tanks put, dishing out so much DPS. The Zealots coming in staggered formation, able to sit on top of this production. And GG. What a, what a straightforward game from Daisy. It's just like you said. I mean, identify that there was a big push coming. And then punished it violently. I mean, like, <laughs> it, it, it is a big credit to Daisy that he hit right when the six tanks were there. Yeah. And the reinforcing three tanks were en route. Many more Hellions were also en route. If he'd waited a little longer, he could have had quite a difficulty, obviously, with the bunkers cropping up. But more importantly, with the tank count being a bit high, you see Goody there. A little bit uh, bothered, I guess I'd say, by that initial game, feeling a little bit of frustration. But again, he's been doing almost all Marine Marauder lately. So he's going to go back to what is now his standard.
He pushed, uh, Daisy pushed forward, as you said, at the perfect time there. Not only was it the fact that those reinforcements were coming along, like you mentioned, but also the slight unsiege there of two siege tanks to be able to push forwards whilst the Immortals then came in to focus fire them down on that south position very, very quickly. And then there weren't too many bunkers to be able to zone out those Zealots, and thus they were able to close the gap with those extra siege tanks up to that northern position. So again, Daisy with so much potential to be able to set up a fantastic concave along that very big area like we stated earlier on daybreak there again i'm not a fan of it on that map i think it would work much better on cloud kingdom now that we are actually uploading up onto it but goody has to feel very very apprehensive about doing that again after it got shut down so hard i think that one thing that goody can do as an adjustment is try to be more aggressive early on trying to do something like a double heli and harass yes just force your opponent to make some extra stalkers. The worst unit that you want to be making against mecking play in the early game. I mean, any amount of pressure would be good. Could even do something like, again, not build that engineering bay, get a very early two extra factories, and just do a straight one tech lab factory push with some Hellion reinforcement. Anything would have been stronger than waiting for that time. It would have been indeed. So ladies and gentlemen, let's jump on to game number two. Loading up onto Cloud Kingdom here. Game is loaded and good to go here for the EPS final cup number six for the summer 2012 season. Let's jump right into the game, guys. As spawning up to the top right hand corner as our red Terran, we do have ESC's Goody. And down in the bottom left. Up 1-0 and o with some very solid Protoss play. It is ESC's Daisy. Now, okay, so the way in which Siege Tanks are very, very strong on this map against Protoss is that once it's two base to two base situation, Again, this is something that we see a lot from MTW Supernova. He will end up moving down to the third location of here for Protoss, then start sieging up these locations here, not only to be able to provide himself a great base to then pressure at the second, but also even mix in medevacs with that, then start dropping on these high grounds, and then start sieging up the infrastructure of the Protoss, and it can be very, very difficult to deal with, not because of the positioning of the siege tanks, but because you end up seeing bunker walls go down between that second and third, making it so difficult to break with charge lots that are, again, so adamantly produced against some kind of mech play. So yeah, yeah. if Goody wants to stick to that kind of style that we see Supernova do against Protoss here on this map, then that could work out very, very well for him. But again, as we said before, he's got to feel very uncomfortable after being shut down so easily in game number one. Well, it looks like we don't really see any gas out of Goody right now. Goody looks like he is going to be going for the standard one barracks expand. This is a map where barracks aggression works really nicely. It's kind of a... Um, I guess I would call it a, like a wide map along the diagonal. I Meaning that there's a lot of counterattacks, a lot of drops that can go on, a lot of cool expanding. But in terms of just walking over to your opponent's base to kill them, it's a pretty short distance. So early six racks pressure from just Marines, early three racks Marauder with Stim aggression, early three racks Marauder with Concussive Shell aggression, all great, all completely um, possible on this map. And for now, what do we have Daisy doing? Just two guys on Gaseous, and no doubt that one gate expand uh, at this point here against his opponent. Unless, of course, he gets a whiff of the fact that his opponent is going for a one barracks expand and feels that he can punish it. But it's very difficult nowadays to actually be able to punish that one barracks expand from a Terran. All the Terrans in the world have been able to just sit back, oh. macro up, and be able to. Oh, dear Great me. Great play by Goody. This punishes a Protoss that oh. didn't build that initial zealot. Yeah, that's really, really bad here for Daisy. He's getting that stalk out as quickly as he can do. And, it, and even even so, he actually forced him to spend a Chrono Boost on that Stalker, which he may not uh, have wanted yeah. to initially. So that's a little bit less probes. That's a little bit less quicker warp gate tech here. So for a Goody at this point, that's, that's a really nice win. One thing that's quite fortunate about this position, though, is that you know your opponent cannot be doing pressure that early. I mean, these yep. two barracks are quite a bit delayed. Ooh. This bunker has to be going down quite early. And as a Protoss player, you can just get one Stalker and then double expand. Looks like Daisy's getting two Stalkers. Also totally great. Getting two Stalkers and then double expanding. What can the Terran player really do about it? There's almost nothing. Yeah, that's expansion. Ends up going down. During the midst of that, 
Daisy did throw down that second gas just to be able to get that uh, second gas geyser as well as all six um, probes on those gas geysers going and just to be able to provide himself a little bit of tech. So on the opportunity cost wasted of the fact that his Nexus was blocked and thus his resources would have been piling up a little bit there. Uh, so now throwing down that robo facility potentially a little bit earlier than would have occurred earlier but Again, you know, Goody with that block, with the fact that he's going to be able to set himself up a second bunker here as well, he's going to be okay against any kind of aggression that Daisy will be able to put on at this point. Goody's starting to do a little bit of the move out, just now finishing up those two guys. It's a little bit late, but that's due to the fact that he got that engineering bay up early and then went, wait a minute, am I being attacked soon? Better get double bunker. All gets in the way of getting that gas. So Daisy, uh, rather than going for the double expand, also going for a great play, getting Robo facility before any additional gateways. I think, um, you know, Goody here has to be a little bit apprehensive as to what he's seen. He tries to send a scout over, does not see the Nexus yet. And there's, again, when you block uh, an, an expansion like that as a Terran, uh, and you delay it for so long and you realize your opponent has actually skipped that initial Zealot, there's the potential that the Protoss can end up just saying, well, you know, to hell with it. I'll just go, you know, for Warp Gate and go for it from there. But no, Daisy just playing standard here and a very, very quick Robo Bay. Um, this could punish him if he's not getting that Viking up count up quick enough. Yeah, I do like this play quite a bit from our Protoss player, Daisy. Again, Goody looks a lot like he's going to be going for some sort of early ground aggression. I also like this a lot. I anticipate it'll um, be Goody's discretion of how to split his units that's going to help him pull ahead. Most players do want to do a direct assault with Marine Medevac, even taking out these destructible rocks. Daisy, by going for this very, very fast Colossus play, is super low on sentries. Look at that. One sentry, almost none right there. It looks like we do have one Colossus getting chronoed out. And will he go for range right now as well? Yep, that will be, should be started in just a little bit wow. here. There we go. Um, as he will be able to poke away at the front of these bunkers with those Colossus. Not too hard to be able to deal with there. But again, the star pot is on the way here for Goody. So a nicely timed little build here for Goody. Very important to have that out before the... Well, I mean, as the Colossus are moving out across the map here. Um, and, you know, it, it sometimes is the case that you can have just two Vikings and slowly pick it away from them because you do have the architectural advantage of that high ground of, the, uh, of your main base here. Um, but... Other than that, you know, Goody, if he's not able to respond in time, could take a little bit of damage regardless. Goody yeah. looks like he's just setting himself up again uh, for that standard push. Uh, double medevac will be ever so slightly delayed, but everything is in order in Goody's base. He's going to have plus one combat shield, stim, concussive shell. The question for Goody now is, how does he step into the next phase of the game? Bomber and other Terran players throw down command centers already, or they throw down those extra barracks. I think before any of that happens, I really hope that he actually goes for this two medevac push out into the middle of the map, and then makes his present felt at the front of his opponent's base, because that is going to force the Colossus to reveal themselves, and once the Colossus reveal yeah. themselves at the front of his opponent's natural, he has a lot more time to be able to really, really deal, um, you know, get that Viking production going. And here we go. Goody gonna poke out here I really hope he goes the full way and doesn't just say you know goes to the middle of the map and tries to scare his opponent for some reason yeah goody ah oh gosh getting these two barracks a little bit late this is the concern that a lot of Terrans have been having how do I get those barracks up early well just look to bomber he's amazing at getting that ridiculously early six five barracks uh, style up now also command center going down goody's gonna be taking the long way around just so that way he wastes maximum force fields there's the scan He's going to see all those Colossus. Daisy is looking good. Oh, oh, he saw one. Oh, but he sees now the edge of the other second and third, I think. Uh, so he actually pushes in. Oh, but the force wheels are able to cut that by so quickly. I don't think he saw the last two Colossus actually pushing in here. Rips apart all of that bio at the front, and the bio has to retreat oh, for Goody no. at the back. Daisy, once he finishes this extra Colossus, can actually just go for the two base timing push. He even has the pylon set up. Daisy smells blood in the water. He is instantly going to go into high gear. Yeah, these 
<laughs> this Protoss Force is going to cascade down upon the defenses here of Goody. And again, he doesn't have any Vikings out right now. He only has the two. These three Colossus are going to be able to do so much damage potentially here before those three, two Vikings are able to really do anything. And if he keeps the Colossus down to the southern position here, and look at that, he has to pull off the SCVs to try and repair as best he can do. Force Fields trying to deny that. Not the Where most amazing base plus. Where are the Vikings? They're stuck up in the main, and it looks like Goody's doing a decent job controlling this, but he needs to get those Vikings into action and there. Now they start working away at those Colossus, but oh my god, so many SCVs have been annihilated. 23 have been killed off. Oh dear me, he's just going to reinforce with so many Stalkers here. Trying to focus down those Vikings. He knows if he kills those, these four Colossus are going to be able to absolutely break Goody here. So many workers killed off. 28 workers. Right now, 45 probes to the 31 SCVs here. And Daisy with just phenomenal firepower marching into the natural of Goody. A solid two base all in play, reinforced by that loss of early units from Goody and Daisy is going to be showing us a very swift game. GG! Daisy will take that best of three, so he is our champion for the Summer Cup number six for the 2012 season here. Daisy, he looks really, really good there, but I think one of the oversteps we saw there from Goody is the fact that as a Terran, once you see even just one Colossus, I think maybe he thought that range wasn't done yet. He sees one Colossus. Yes. Normally, when you see two Colossus, then you're thinking, ah, okay, That's now range time is done. Gotten range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But one Colossus, ah, range maybe isn't done. Maybe I can stim up, try and snipe that out with a few Marauders. But you have to be so careful about walking into that Thermal Lens, lens Death Trap. And it's interesting to note that the it was the same theme in both games, even though Goody did mech in one and Marine Marauder in the other. It was an attack that got completely crushed and then an instant counterattack by Daisy for a clean win. I mean, it's one of those things where it's the timing pushes can be so easy to get addicted to. You send your Marine Marauder forward, do some massive damage, yeah. but there's a couple of trap plays that we're seeing more and more out of Protosses where they're almost inviting those kinds of plays in. So. That means that that is the conclusion of the EPS number six pro stop that we have here at Gamescom. And this afternoon, we're going to be starting with the IEM semifinals. The first match is going to be Violet going up against, who's the opponent? Uh, Nertio. Nertio. Oh my god, it, it uh, popped out of my head. I just couldn't think of anyone other than uh, MVP. Vortex. Yeah, going up against Vortex down in the lower semifinal. A ZVZ and a TVZ going on this afternoon. Now, I'm not 100% sure which match I match the casting, but I hope it's Vortex MVP. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do for well, you, Well, I mean, it doesn't matter either way, because both of these games, I love ZVZ, I love Nurtio, and um, Violet. <laughs> God damn. But all of the players that are actually playing here are just, I'm really, really good friends with. I, I love Nurtio and Violet, both of these guys going up against one another. Nurtio has amazing ZVZ. Violet also not worried in the slightest. Mm -hmm. I talked to his manager as well as a few of his friends <laughs> yesterday, uh, and he was more than fine with going up against Nurtio. Meanwhile, Vortex and M MVP, I've been an advocate of Vortex for a long, long time. Maybe even an acolyte of Vortex for a long time. Wow. So, I. Uh, he is very strong, and I think if anybody's going to take out MVP, could be Vortex. Well, guys, we're going to be stepping away to a break as we set up the IEM semifinals this afternoon, so don't go anywhere. We're signing out from the desk here.